السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His household, his companions We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them all And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single one of you and the Ummah at large, our offspring, those to come up to the end, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep them steadfast on the deen. My brothers and sisters, it is very important for us to keep on asking ourselves, why were we created? Why were we made? Why did Allah make me? Why do I have eyes? Why do I have ears? Why my hands? Why this body? Why do I have to work hard in order to eat? It's a very important question because if we were lazy, we would not be able to afford life. So in order to live and to enjoy life, you have to work. And this work is not easy. It's very, very difficult. Some people work all day and they only live during the weekend. So Monday to Friday, they work very hard. They earn a little bit of money. And the weekend, they have the time to spend a bit of that money. While they are working, they need to eat. Why? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make a stomach that becomes empty a few times a day? Why? Why did Allah make it so difficult for us just to be alive? Subhanallah. That is a very interesting question. We have no answer besides the answer given by Allah Himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us He created death, He created life. And He created them for a reason. And the entire stay in this world is all about something very important. So what is it? Many places in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to us about this. For example, in Surah Al-Mulk, which is a surah that I'm sure a lot of us would be reading regularly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, It is He who has created death and life in order to test you who from among you has better deeds? Who has better deeds? Who is going to do a better job? That's why he created death and life. So all of us here, we are in a competition. This competition is for us to prove to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we did our best according to the circumstances that he put us in. Which means... You did not choose where you were going to be born. You did not choose the color that you have. You did not choose, for example, the parents that you have. We didn't choose that. That was chosen by Allah in the same way that when you write a public examination, you do not decide the questions. The examiner decides the question. You cannot enter an O-level, A-level examination of secondary school and decide, you know what, I will ask myself the questions. No, to be tested, the examiner needs to put you into a situation and tell you what are you going to do, what is the correct answer. And before that, it is his duty to give you the rules and regulations, to teach you. For example, you go to the school, you go to the college, you learn in the college for the whole year, then you enter the examination. The examination is according to the syllabus that you were taught. That's what it is. So Allah has sent us the syllabus. What is it? It is revelation. Revelation, the Quran, many of us, myself included, we are guilty of not doing enough to develop our relationship with the Quran. My beloved brothers and sisters, you see these mobile phones? People are picking them up to take a video. Wallahi, it is actually technology. Technology can be good and it can be bad, depending on how you use it. The question I have, 
all of us as Muslimin, we will be proud to say that I have mobile phone and I have this one is better than that one and that one is cheaper than this one and this one has a bigger mind and this one has a bigger, for example, for example, uh, you know, the, the speed and so on. The processing speed is more on this phone. And a lot of us would say as Muslims that I have Quran. I have the book of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is an application with the Mus'haf in my phone. Am I right? Correct. But the question is, every day we use so much of the phone, how much of the Quran do we actually use in the phone? And I want to ask myself and all of you to do more regarding opening the Quran minimum once a day from your phone so that it will bear witness for you. Wallahi, I have done my own survey speaking to people, asking them, how many times did you open the Quran in your phone? Most of them say, we have never opened it. We have it. Application is there, but we didn't open it. Well, you have it as a token because you're a Muslim, right? But use it. It is more important than WhatsApp that we are using now more than anyone else, more than anything else. We're using every little while, making a phone call, doing this, doing that. Subhanallah, that is beautiful. But wallahi, what is more important is the Qur'an. And the beauty with the Qur'an, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, خَيْرُ الْعَمَلِ مَا دِيمَ عَلَيْهِ وَإِنْ قَلْ The best deed, that which you do regularly, even if it is small. What that means is, read one verse a day. How much? One. Not more. How much? One verse a day, it will take you 35 seconds, maybe one minute, two minutes, early morning. But do it every single day. Why is it that the Prophet says that if your deed is done regularly, it is better than doing the whole deed one day and then leaving for a long, long time. Some people when they are feeling pious, maybe they have a problem, they sit, they want to read the whole Quran in one sitting. After that for the whole year, there is nothing happening. Many of us, mashallah, the month of Ramadan is coming. We become Muslims in Ramadan. <laughs> Subhanallah. We become people who are real Muslims. Which means when I say Muslims, yes, we are Muslims throughout the year. But we start practicing. We become softened. We become better people. We pick up the Quran. We do things. Wallahi, let that happen throughout the year. I tell you. The reason, and this is what I was saying. One day I will die. You will die. If you are used to opening the Qur'an every single day for one verse, the day you die, how would you have started that day? The Qur'an, how much did you read? One verse. After that, what happened? You passed away. When you passed away, your deeds will go up, right? When your deeds are recorded and registered, it will be written there. This man died on this date. He started the day with a recitation of the Qur'an. One verse. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. That's the beauty of it. We don't want it to be written, this man read the Quran last Ramadan. <laughs> he passed away one day before Ramadan. Is that what we want? No, we want every day. This is why it's important, do a small deed, but every single day. Your istighfar, when you say astaghfirullah al azim you ask for forgiveness. Many of us, we only ask for forgiveness when we have a problem. Suddenly you are diagnosed with a disease. Astaghfirullah, oh Allah, forgive me, forgive me, oh Allah. Maybe I'm sinful, you gave me a disease. My brother, Allah wanted you to come closer to Him. That's why He affected you or inflicted you with a problem sometimes. The hadith says, Inna Allah idha ahabba abdan ibtala. When Allah loves a worshipper, He tests him. So you have a financial problem. It's because Allah loves you. So there are young people who say, How? I have a problem. How, how is it that Allah loves me? So He's giving me a problem. I explain. You read no salah. You did not read your salah, you did not give your zakah, you were drinking alcohol, you were gambling, you were far away from the masjid, you did not used to even look like a Muslim, and you had a problem. It brought you towards reading tahajjud on top of the five salah. Was it not a gift of Allah? When you had a problem, what happens? You try to get closer to Allah, haram, adultery, no, let's leave this. Why? Because I have a very big problem. I have a very big problem. So Allah helped you through the problem to, for, to leave the sin. After that you say, oh Allah, forgive me. You are in the masjid very early. MashaAllah, brother. MashaAllah. What brought you here? We will not ask. But Allah knows what brought you here is the problem. 
If it was not the problem, maybe you were not even going to be there for salah. The same applies. We start waking up for tahajjud, crying to Allah. Allah loves those tears. Allah loves the condition. Allah says, my worshiper, look at this condition of yours. So beautiful, so lovely. You are so close to me. I want to leave you like this for a few more years. Subhanallah. And we will say, no, ya Allah, no, no, no. Solve my problem. I have economic problem, hardship. Wallahi, all of us seated here, we have some form of a problem. Why? That is Allah. Allah has to keep you in some problem through your life. If not one, then another one. If not that one, then a third one. When you are finished with one problem, another one is going to come. Because that's how you will be in check. That's how you will remain on the path. If all of us were happy, everything was smooth, no health problem, no social problem, no wealth problem, where do you think we would be? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make things easy for us. This is why Allah says, I have created death and life in order to test you who has better deeds. I will put you in a situation and I want to see from amongst you who does the best. So we are in competition, but the competition is not exactly with one another in every aspect of existence, but rather the situation that Allah has put you in. For example, a rich man is not in direct competition with a poor man in that aspect of wealth. But he is in competition regarding the situation Allah put him in. Allah made you wealthy, what will you do? Allah made you poor, what will you do? That's what it is. Then you pass or fail according to your questions. And the questions we are asked are all different questions. The situations we are put into, every one of us, we have a different situation, even though it may seem similar in some ways. So my beloved brothers and sisters, like I was saying, this technology that we have, ask yourself, I use it every day to communicate with who? With the rest of creation. It's okay. It's halal. It's permissible. My wife, my family, my business partners, my friends, my acquaintances, no harm, no problem. I use this to communicate with creation. Brothers and sisters, you will succeed when you use it also to communicate with the Creator Himself. Remember that. Remember that. And the reason why I have chosen to talk about this technological advancement and this piece of apparatus is because my brothers and sisters, all of us, almost 99 to 100%, we have these devices. The world has changed drastically in the last 10 to 15 years. Before that, perhaps people might say, no, I didn't have, and so on. Maybe some of the elderly people or some who are really disciplined or some who cannot afford, but it's become very low in terms of cost. They may not have it. Everyone else has it. And we are excited. Brother say, can I have your number? Please, can I have your number? My brother, my number is not important. The number of Allah is more important. Wallahi. If you did not know me, but you knew Allah, your chances of going to Jannah are far greater than if you knew me and you did not know Allah, the chance is actually cut. May Allah forgive us. To get to Jannah, the ultimate goal, you need to know the maker, the owner, the nourisher, the cherisher, the sustainer, the provider, the protector, the curer. That's who you need to know. You don't need to know that man or this man. No. And in order to know the maker, you need to know the syllabus that he sent us. He sent it with the best of creation. The most noble of all prophets, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We will honor him. We will respect him. We will consider him the best of creation. The most noble of all messengers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to study his life. And to put whatever he has taught into practice. And to understand what he has told us is prohibited is actually prohibited. And what he has told us is a requirement, will be a requirement. Make it your business to follow the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as best as possible. My brothers and sisters, Allah loves you. I tell you how I know this. Today you are in the house of whom? My house? No. Your house? No. The house of some wealthy man? No. You are in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A beautiful place in the center of Hong Kong, subhanallah. This lovely place known as Kowloon, subhanallah. And we are in the house of Allah. We could have been anywhere else. Am I right? We could have been anywhere else. 
It is a sign of the love of Allah to bring you here, to put it in your heart, let me go. Subhanallah. So don't be mistaken. Don't let people tell you Allah does not love you. No, He loves you. Allah loves you. Allah has given you chance upon chance upon chance. Allah puts it in your heart, let me go to the masjid. And when we come to the masjid, why do we come? Why are you here? I can tell you why you are here. To worship Allah primarily, right? Number two, to listen to a good message that will motivate you and I to be better people. That's it. So if you come into the masjid and you hear a talk where the man who is speaking is demoralizing you, or he is spreading hate, or he is spreading filth, and disunity and dislike, that's not what you came here for, right? You did not come here for that. You came here to listen to a message that can purify you, make you a better person, make you think when you walk out, hey, I heard a good message, I must change my life. Because there are few categories of people. One of them is, they say, I heard a good message. What was it? It was a good message. But what did he say? It was a powerful message. Now shaitan makes us forget because shaitan, he does not like it when you come to the house of Allah. So now when you come to the house of Allah, he makes you forget. So when you walk out, you don't remember what was said. But wallahi, my brothers and my sisters, if you can bear in mind that you need to change to be a better person every day, better than the previous day, that is success. That is success. You cannot suddenly become perfect because we are human beings and we are not perfect. But we will try our best every day, improve one thing, two things. Every day we become closer to Allah. Don't go back. Don't go back. If you want to taste the sweetness of Iman, one of the conditions of tasting the sweetness of Iman is that you don't like to go back to the day of ignorance that you were in after Allah has guided you. When Allah guides someone, you know, many of us, we pass through a phase in our life. Sometimes you're young and you're growing older, subhanAllah. You pass through a phase where maybe the environment has affected you, your friends have affected you, something has affected you. That is a phase. The quicker you come out of that phase, the better it is for you and for everyone else. So as we come out of the phase, we call it the period of ignorance. We all have our small periods of ignorance. Some people, mashallah, Allah has blessed them. Like the hadith says, there are some youth, they grow up in the obedience of Allah. For them is a special place on the day of judgment. A young person who has grown up in the obedience of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. For that person, he will have a special shade on the day of judgment, without a, a doubt. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all and may He guide the youth from amongst us so that we can grow up in His obedience. But for those who might have dilly-dally swayed this way, that way, don't worry. For as long as you are breathing, you are alive, you are in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, my brothers, my sisters, there is hope for everyone. Your day today must be better than yesterday and tomorrow must be better than today. Remember this. Because that is success and that is exactly how we will be able to progress get closer to Allah Rabbul Izzati wa Jalal remember my brothers and sisters the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought you in this house already determines that there is a link between you and Allah there is a relationship what you have to do make that relationship strong don't just be here for Salat al-Jum'ah. Allah loves it when you come to His house often. Not like me and you. Nowadays, if you get visitors every day, your wife will say, what's going on here? Can't you tell them to go to a restaurant? Right? We have become less hospitable than our fathers and our forefathers. They used to be so happy when there were visitors in the home. Every day people would come from all over, subhanAllah. They would welcome them no matter what. There was a lot of barakah. But today, let's be honest, people, they are not as happy when visitors step beyond their welcome, right? So someone comes to your door, they knock the door without phoning you. Please, let's not do this. But anyway, you must phone people before you go. Make sure that they are there. You must know when to go. But more important than that, you must know when to leave. You see, I am talking to you today. 
I was given a certain time, but I tell you, I will stop before the time. Why? I rather you go back saying it was very short. It's better for me that you go back saying it was very short. Then for you to go back and say, you know what? Today the guy was late. Whatever I said, you forgot it because I took two minutes long. That's the reason. So we need to be intelligent. When you go to someone's house, you visit. And before you sit for too long, you leave so that next time they say, please come back. They know that you are a good guest. You know when to go. You see, I remember when I was young, I went with my mother to one person's house. As a joke on the door, they had a sticker. It said, we are happy upon your arrival, but we will be even happier when you depart. <laughs> Subhanallah. My mother said, I don't ever want to go back to that house again. She never went after that. And I told her, Ma, this is just a joke. No, because they feel it. You know, this means something. But in essence, that message was trying to say, you need to know when to go from here. You cannot sit all night. People start saying, you know what? This man is sitting too long. The same applies when someone comes to the house, for example, and they come very often or they want to stay for too long. We get upset. The example I'm giving you is that of the house of Allah. It is the opposite. A person whose heart is stuck to the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for them will be a VIP status on the day of judgment. Anytime you don't know where to go, go to the house of Allah. Even if it is empty, come inside, read the Quran, meet someone, say a good word, do some ibadah, make wudu, and read a little book, something good. This is the best place you can be. The best place. Now I want to tell you, I started off by saying, why did Allah make us? Allah made us to test us. Everything that happens to you is a test. Everything that happens to you is a test. But I tell you, how you lead your life, that's how you will die. And how you die, that's how you will be resurrected. Subhanallah. A few days ago, on the 24th of April, we all saw a clip of a sheikh or a mukri, a person who reads the Quran, Qari. We call him Qari Sahib. We saw him, an Indonesian, his name was Ja'far Abdul Rahman, Rahmatullahi Alayhi. He passed away on the 24th of April, which was a few days ago. How did he pass away? He was at a function and they asked him to read the Quran. So he was reading Surah Al Mulk and he began the recitation. The verses that I started with today, right? Glory be to Allah, O oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The greatness of Allah is being mentioned in this beautiful verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being glorified and the qualities of Allah being mentioned. In his hand is the control and the kingdom of absolutely everything. Which means he controls everything. And he is able to do everything. All able, all capable. The one who has created death and life in order to test you. Who from amongst you has better deeds. And indeed he is powerful and most forgiving. When he said most forgiving, his eyes rolled while he was reading. His eyes rolled. He started the next verse while in Sakarat. He continued. Imagine, sometimes if we suffer some sickness or something, we will stop what we are doing and worry about what's happening to us. This man suffered a heart attack. He did not stop the tilawa of the Quran. Imagine, what type of reciter he may have been. He continued. You can see the clip. It is viral on the internet at the moment. It's only three days old. And do you know what happened? As Alladi Khalaqa Sabah Samawatin, when he said Tibaqan, he was already gone. In the public, in front of everyone, he dropped. May Allah grant him Jannah. What a beautiful death. When the hadith says you will be resurrected according to how you die, he will be resurrected reading the Quran. Inshallah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The question I want to end with for myself and yourselves. The question I have, here is a man, he passed away while reading the Quran. Why? Because he was reading the Quran. If he was not used to reading the Quran, would he have died reading the Quran? No. How many of us would like to pass away while reading the Quran? All of us. 
Am I right? The question is, do you read the Quran? That's the question. We want to die in sujood, but we don't do sujood. So I was speaking to one young man, and this is facts. You know, nowadays we're living in such an advanced world that the brain thinks in some weird way sometimes. So I was speaking to one young man, and I told him, you know, look at this death. Look at how beautiful the death is. And we want to die in sujood. But my brother, do you read salah? He says, no, I don't because I don't want to die. When I'm ready to die, I will start reading salah. Look at that. How twisted is the mind that we think that if I want to die in sujood, oh Allah, take me away in sujood. So you make dua every day, take me away in sujood. But you don't do the sujood because you don't want to die. What's that? The hadith says you will die according to how you lived and you will be resurrected according to how you died. So we need to understand this. Let us increase our sujood. Imagine if you were to die, okay, reading the Quran, that was a very high example, right? In sujood, I have also seen this in Medina Munawwara. It was also a very high example. What about dying in the house of Allah? Is it not a blessed place? It is. Well, let's come here. Come here and come often. And come not only on a Friday. I know perhaps we live far away. Perhaps it's not near and so on. At least the closest masjid to where you are. Or at least sit on the prayer mat in your house. Sit on it for a little while. Open a book. Do your work. Do something on the prayer mat. Imagine if you died on a prayer mat. Forget about people. We are not worried about people. We are worried about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will die with the angels recording. This man died on his prayer mat after Salatul Fajr. He sat there for half an hour and he passed away on the spot. Subhanallah. So that is the lesson I have. Let's learn my brothers and sisters to be the best of people. Because of the same verse, Allah created you in order to test you who is better. We have one very big disease in the ummah. That is, we don't greet each other. That's why there is no mahabba. There is no love. We don't greet. The hadith says, ala adullukum, ala amrin idha fa'altumuhu tahababtum. Should I show you something? Before I translate that hadith, let me tell you. Don't you agree that we are very disunited and fragmented as an ummah today? Don't you agree? We have small, small groups and small, small factions and people don't want to talk and don't want to look at each other. So here is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is saying to you and to me, should I not show you something? If you do it, it will increase the love between you. Should I not show you something? If you do it, it will increase the mahabba. Now, you, if I say, yes, please show me. Today, if you tell someone, show me, he will stand up and give you a long lecture, what to do, what not to do, how much money to give, how much this, how much that, and long talks. And even after that, we will be frustrated and we won't find that love and that mahabba. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, let me show it to you. One simple thing. Afshus salam baynakum. Spread the salam between you. Spread the greeting of peace genuinely between you. Greet each other, smile, and don't go too much beyond that. You see, the problem is, if I greet you, Assalamu alaikum, my brother, how are you? I need to watch the expression on my face. It must be good and pleasant, not, Assalamu alaikum. And I walk away. You see that? Assalamu alaikum. The brother will say, why are you sniffing at me? I don't need this. You see? Be genuine. Assalamu alaikum. MashaAllah. Look at the expression. There must be positive power and energy coming from your face. Because people, when they look at you, they need to see and believe you are genuine. That's all. You are genuine, sincere person. You really want to greet. Assalamu alaikum. And what you do? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Maybe one or two simple questions about how are you, my brother? How is everything? Okay, yes, fine. Stop there. Proceed. Don't go too much into private nitty-gritties. Brother, what's your job? How much salary are you getting every month? Where do you buy your stock from? What is the cost price of these goods? I'm going to come to your business. What do you do? Okay, I need to do this, this. I'm going to have a discount from you. Give me a... That salam was a waste of time. That salam was for another reason. 
This is why when Muslims deal with Muslims, a lot of people say, no, 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 I prefer not to. Because this guy is going to cry for a discount, he's not going to pay me, he's going to say, I'm a Muslim brother, you need to have mercy on me. Yet, the mercy that those I owe money to is not the same, subhanallah. Then you cannot go to someone you owe money to and say, Are, I, I cannot pay you because there are Muslims here who have not paid me because, you know, I'm having mercy on them. You cannot do that. This is why we say when you want to greet someone, greet properly. He's your brother. If you visit his shop, pay the full price. It is better for you to do dealing in that way. If you visit his business, he may decide to give you some discount and so on. But you need to know, my brothers and my sisters, when we are separated, when we allow the dunya to come between us, we will be separated. When we do it for the sake of Allah, we will always be united. So greet each other. I know it sounds very small and simple, but wallahi, I am only telling it to you because it is the remedy provided by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If it was not said by him, why would I say it today? He says clearly, should I not show you something if you were to do it? Love would, it would cause love amongst yourselves. Spread the salam, greet each other. Today we don't greet. I promise you the non-Muslims greet us more than the Muslims. Even myself, I promise you, you have a lot of non-Muslims, they look at you, they see you with a beard, they smile at you, hello. Wow, what happened here? Subhanallah. And then you look at a Muslim walking, you know, like, like he's really someone who has so much of problem, difficulty, he's feeling difficult to look at your face. Why? Greet. To sallim ala kulli man arafta wa man lam ta'arif. Greet those whom you know, and those whom you don't know, you will find your heart will become clear. This is why the Prophet ﷺ told one of his companions, if you are able to get up at night or to, or to get up in the morning and to go to bed at night, without a feeling of negativity in your heart for anyone and everyone else, then do it. Do it. Subhanallah. You will enter Jannah. A lot of us have baggage. What is that baggage? Thoughts, misunderstandings with one another. Sometimes our children, our own family members, and we don't get along. Is that what we were created for? To try and leave the problem? People say, I will sort you out on the day of judgment. Have you heard that? I will wait for the day of Qiyamah and I will fix you. How do you know when you get to the day of Qiyamah, the tables might turn, you might find out that person was right, you were wrong. Then what will you do? That is why the hadith says, solve your problem here. If you can, solve it here. Make sure, because on that day, there is no dirham, no dinar that will help you. You don't know what will happen. What if you find out you were wrong? It's over. You lose. We cannot afford to lose. Learn to forgive. Learn to embrace. Learn to love one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed you will see the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will witness how Jannah is earned through simple deeds that sometimes we take for granted. We take simple deeds for granted. I always give an example of how there was a person who gave a dog water to drink and Allah forgave him. Because he had a good feeling towards another creature of Allah, which is a dog. The hadith could have used the example of a bird or some beautiful creature, a peacock, something like that. But the hadith used the example of a dog. A dog, you know the ruling regarding dogs. Dog. Muslims see a dog, they run the other way. I know that. But he gave water to the dog. Subhanallah. Allah gave him forgiveness. What do you think you will achieve when you reach out to another human being? Even if they do not belong to your faith, no problem. You reach out to them. You give them water and drink. You were kind to them. You smiled at them. What's wrong? They looked at you and they said, MashaAllah, these Muslims, they always have a good expression. I have so many examples of that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness and ease. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. These are a few words of a message that I, would, I intended to deliver to you today so that I can improve my life and my relation with Allah. And so that all of us here can improve our relationship with Allah and our relationship with the rest of those who are around us so that we can be the best when we die 
we will die in the best condition. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد. اقرأ كتاب الله ترق جنانه وتن العظيم الأجر والغفران رتله روي القلب من نفحاته كالماء يروي لهفة العطشان